Now that I've got your attention, if you thought that Dark Magician Girl or any female Yu-Gi-Oh monster was going to be on this list, you can go ahead and click off this video and make your way to the nearest church. Now that we've got 100% viewer retention, I went through all of the over 8,000 monsters in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh to find that there are 44 monsters that are some kind of food product. And today, I'll be going over which of those monsters I would eat in its entirety, provided they don't send me to the Shadow Realm. What am I considering a food Yu-Gi-Oh monster? At the risk of losing further viewer retention, I'm discounting any monster that can be turned into food. As much as I'd quite like to try 7 colored sashimi, it will not be included in this discussion. That will also include any animalistic monsters, so basically the entire beast monster type and just about every monster in the water attribute. I will only be taking monsterized versions of actual food items that you could have right now into consideration. So this essentially discounts the entire Madolce archetype, but for one exception that I've made and it's the first entry of our list. Madolce Chicolates. I've decided that these are chicks made out of chocolate, despite their fuzzy appearance. I don't typically have much of a sweet tooth, but something tells me that these sweet little babies are Yu-Gi-Oh's equivalent to the enchanted chocolates from the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy. I will be partaking in said sweets in the exact manner that Billy did. Before we get into the rest of the list, let's cover a few dishonorable mentions of Yu-Gi-Oh food monsters that taste best when thrown directly in the trash. Marshmallow, and by extension more Marshmallow, I imagine a Marshmallow tastes exactly like a peep. Peeps are awful, especially the one that I eat every year at Easter. Pump King and Pump Princess have been eliminated from my ideal Yu-Gi-Oh diet. Being that they are zombie types, I imagine that any bit of whatever a pumpkin is has decayed and rotted. The only sick I'm trying to be is when a pro snowboarder from an early 2000s PlayStation game calls out my trick landings. Ah, tasty! On to the list. If you don't like fruit, I'm going to assume that you have bad credit. I'm sitting around a mid-500. However, I can convince myself that everything is okay and that my bills aren't overdue with a nice bowl of fruit. You probably saw a lot of these coming, but Naturia Strawberry, Naturia Cherries, Naturia Pineapple, and my newly discovered love of Fengli the Soldier Palm. The Naturia monsters, I have no doubt, taste exactly like their real-world counterparts, maybe with a little added guilt to spice things up. But Fengli, being a pineapple dragon, I would think tastes like a mix of pineapple and dragon fruit, which sounds delightful. Typically, a fruit bowl pairs quite nicely with breakfast, and nothing beats a nice egg for breakfast. Now, us commoners tend to stick with the standard chicken egg, maybe a duck egg if you're really feeling adventurous, but what about a reptile egg? Specifically, Reptia Egg. Some of you may be disturbed by the spotting and the ominous glowing aura that surrounds these scaly delicacies, but that's where the flavor is. Hop on board because we're taking this train straight to Flavortown. I've envisioned this tasting like a pre-salted egg when prepared in a pan, or a more briny and cold-blooded balut. Now that we've started our day with a well-balanced breakfast, I'm looking forward to a mid-morning snack. And my snack of choice would be something salty, like potato chips, and or something fruity and sweet, like candy. How about potato and chips, and jelly beans man? Those would be my choices. Personally, I'm leaning more towards potato and chips, because they also come with their own bags of potato chips, meaning I'm getting a lot of bang for my buck. I'm hesitant with Jerry Beans Man. He may not have the unmatched battle prowess of, say, Insect Knight, but with his true abilities still untested, I'm afraid that I will in fact become the mid-morning snack. Because the fight with Jerry Beans Man took longer than expected, we're rolling right up on lunchtime, and I could go for a nice burger with a cold beverage. I don't think there would be a single list just like this that would exclude Hungry Burger, the meal that bites you back. Challenge accepted. The only thing this burger is missing is some onions and maybe bacon. Unfortunately, there's no Naturia onion. The layers of the archetype don't go that deep. Oh. And the best cold drink to pair with a hot off the grill burger, aside from a pop, would be a slushy. Just so fitting that this is the monster's actual name. Based on Slushy's effect, it sounds like we get free refills from whatever convenience store, gas station, or bodega procures this refreshing beverage. Never again will I be thirsty. And before dinner time hits, I like to get in a light snack. Something fresh that gets my appetite going for a hearty dinner, and salad is usually my go-to. This isn't your standard salad though, mainly because there's no head of lettuce or cabbage monsters, but we can say it's fancy. Sylvan Peacekeeper, Cherry in Motto, Bean Soldier, and the World Carrot Weight Champion. The salad is so fancy it doesn't even come with dressing. What a shame. I could reasonably take all but one of those monsters in a one-on-one -on -one fight to add to my salad, but Carrot Weight over here isn't going to go quietly. 
gonna have to bite faster than he can punch me. I think that's a Mike Tyson quote or something. I broke my back. And we finally made it to dinner time and I can already hear the bell ringing. We've had a long day fighting monsters to eat instead of just going to the grocery store, but damn it, I say it was worth every ounce of sweat. This time around though, our time-honored dinner of meat and potatoes has been pre-prepared for us. Mild turkey and mystic potato, the kind of meal that really gets you going for the next day. Ignore the mischievous face on your potatoes, folks. That's clearly the way they were intended to look. And of course, we can't end the day without dessert. We've done pretty good sticking to our diet of only the freshest and most essential Yu-Gi-Oh monsters, but it's time to treat ourselves to a handful of marsh macarons. No, it's not a peep like the other two. This is fine cuisine. I don't know if anyone else would get this, but this monster reminds me of the Scrab Cakes from the Oddworld series, which is to this day a fictional food item that I want to try most. And we made some good Scrab Cakes, too. Mm. But that's going to wrap up today's dietary suggestions. Let me know your thoughts. What Yu-Gi-Oh monsters will you be adding to your daily regimen? Drop a comment down below. And if you like the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated. As always, guys, and until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV, signing off.